Hello, my friend. I thought we would take it back to basics today and do an old school YouTube beauty video. What is in my travel makeup bag? As you know, I've been doing YouTube for a very long time. And because of that, I have an extensive collection of things. So when I sift through things, I make very deliberate choices as far as what I bring on vacation and why. And it was a beach vacation, so I had to take that into consideration. So if you're curious to know, what I chose to bring in my travel makeup bag. Hang tight, we're getting into it right now. For our vacation this year, we went to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. It was fabulous. It was our first time there. Our neighbor has a place that she just bought down there and she was kind enough to let us stay in her townhouse and it was fabulous. It was so much fun. We had a great time. We left on a Sunday, we came back on a Thursday and we kept our days packed full of activities. I'm gonna throw some pictures and videos up of some things that we did while we were there. Of course, we had to have a beach day and we just had an absolute blast. So when picking out the makeup, I really wanted things that were lighter, but also very pretty, gave very pretty finishes, but something that I wouldn't just sweat off and it would just drip down my face. By the way, this bag was sent to me a long time ago by Lubella, and it looks like on Amazon they're not there anymore, but there are similar bags available. The bag has a compartment here where you can put your brushes, which of course are all very dirty because I use them. <laughs> And then inside there's actually dividers where you can divide it up to kind of keep things a little more organized. What I've found is that at max I use one divider because more dividers means there's less room for stuff. <laughs> and I wanted to bring a lot of stuff and you can see some of the palettes that I brought. So let's just go ahead and start with those. I grabbed my Amrezy palette and the reason why I grabbed this one, it's by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm, I don't think, it might still be available, but I'm not sure. The reason why I grabbed this is because it has some beautiful sparkly shades they would be great for nighttime or daytime it also has some really nice natural mattes in here that i could use i really love this shade gemini as an outer corner like glitter pop uh, and this shade right here barb is one of my favorite shades in a palette it's really nice just on its own with some liner i mean look at that just uh, oh my gosh i love that freaking shade then i grabbed tiny marvels which was the collab with mel thompson and Sydney grace some beautiful shades in here that i love so much uh scarab fire butts you know how much i love my fire butts uh web is a great shade marvel those were the two i actually ended up using this is actually a marco polo i sent to mel while i was there just showing her how i used tiny marvels while i was on vacation uh, and i used this in a combination of the next palette on that day but i used that shade web and marvel as like kind of the um the the shine that was on my eyes that day what else was on my eyes that day was another fabulous collab, Raw Beauty Christie and ColourPop. And I use this kind of to set up my base, uh, you know, my crease, my outer corner, before I threw that spot, the, the shiny bits from Tiny Marvels all over. Uh, and this is just a fabulous palette. I wish that it could be permanent because I feel like everybody should own this palette. It really is fantastic. Christie did such a wonderful job. Uh, and I really stuck to the mattes in here for that look. Uh, but I did use a little bit of evergreen on another day that I was there. And this is just a wonderful palette. For blush, I wanted to have like a cream and also a powder option. So this has been kind of a go-to of mine since I impulsively bought it at Ulta. This is Tarte's Sugar Rush and this is the shade Ocean Girl. This is their Beach Cheeks formula and it's just a basic cream blush. I believe this marketing is more for younger people, but I don't care. It is a fabulous cream blush. It can build up to being very, very pigmented, or you can share it out and make it a light wash of color. And this is really beautiful for doing that fake sunburn over the nose thing that I think looks really pretty. You know, you would think sun damage wouldn't be pretty, but you know, I think it's kind of pretty. Maybe it's, you know, the generation I grew up in, I don't know, but it's a beautiful blush. That's the point, lasting power is fantastic. But I also wanted a powder version of blush. I brought the Saharan Blush Palette Volume 2 by Juvia's Place. Such beautiful shades in here. Lots of options from this corally shade all the way to this really deep, beautiful mauve. Some shimmery, highlightery kinds of shades. I honestly don't use Sola on my cheeks. It's a little too intense 
intense for me, but I have used this as eyeshadow and it's beautiful. For highlighter, I tend to reach for this Zoba shade. It's gorgeous. And I have used this as a bronzer. It's so, so beautiful. Pigmented, lasting power is fantastic. I know I can count on it and that's why I brought it. I did bring my spider box <laughs> where I keep all of my eyelashes. This is why I call it the spider box is because, yeah. But I forgot my lash glue, so that was kind of pointless to bring that. I didn't end up using it. I have, I did use everything I've showed you. So far, I've used all of that. Now let's get into some of the things that I didn't end up using. This is one thing that was sent to me by Milani. This is the Glow Drops, and it's just basically a very moisturizing primer. It gives a beautiful glow to the skin. I thought this would be really pretty on a day that maybe I wasn't wearing as much makeup. I didn't end up reaching for it, even though it is really pretty as a base under foundation so let me kind of show you what we've got going on here it, it, it does look like it's tinted but it's not when you blend it out that is a lot of product way too much but it just gives like a little bit of a wet look and it's very beautiful I would imagine this would be gorgeous on tan and deep skin tones uh, but I just didn't end up reaching for it I don't know why I just didn't reach for it I brought two foundations with me because I wasn't sure if I was going to want to do like a lighter coverage or like a more medium coverage I knew I didn't want full coverage so I brought these two they're both beautiful this is the skin perfect HD foundation by Koki and this is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh in the shade Light. Oh, and this is the shade 20W. This is a like a light to medium coverage. You can build it up to like a true medium coverage if you want to. It's a beautiful, beautiful finish. I ended up not using this. I decided to just go with this one because I didn't really want coverage. I was at the beach. I wanted something light. Uh, I know some of my peers really didn't like this. Uh, I know it broke out Samantha Marsh. It gave, like, gave her like a rash or something. It was really bad for her. Uh, but for me, I really liked it. Oh, it stung her skin. That's what it was. It stung her skin really bad, which was like, oh my gosh, like it horrified me, but I really like this. <laughs> It's just different strokes for different folks. I had no, you know, no problems with it. And I think it looks beautiful on the skin. It is a true light coverage, light to like very light coverage. So this is what I ended up using while I was there. For concealer, I did bring two things. I brought the Milani Supercharged. Of course, I'm going to bring this. This is like my new big thing that I've been using. This is the Brightening Under Eye Tint in 120 Peach. This is the light coverage. This is slight color correction, not really hardly any coverage at all. I use this every day except for one. And the day that I used uh, a little bit more, actually, you know what, I might, mm, that day I'm, mm, my memory's failing me. I may have used this one time, I did. The Mel Thompson Polo that I just showed you, I was wearing the HD foundation because I did pair it with the e.l.f. Uh, camo concealer, which I'm almost out of and will be repurchasing. This is a fabulous, more full coverage concealer. I did find because my skin is a little bit darker than it normally is that this was a bit light for me right now, but I'm not going to purchase anything again but this because this little bit of depth I've got to my skin Minimal depth, depth uh, will fade probably pretty quickly. But yeah, this is a fantastic concealer. If you haven't tried it and you like something a little more full coverage, definitely recommend this one. For eye primer, I just kind of grabbed something and then I immediately regretted it when I was there. This was sent to me by Maven Beauty. This is their basic beat eye primer in alpaca. It is way too light. And for the natural looks I was going for, this was a big mistake uh, for me. I should have either brought a different shade of their eye primer or just brought a different eye primer altogether because it's just, it's, it's a hint away from white. It's barely a uh, peach in any way. It's just, it was a mistake. I, as soon as I put it on, I instantly regretted bringing this and should have brought something else. I mean, it's a fine eye primer. It's just, it was too light for the looks that I was going for, unfortunately. For face powder, I didn't really use a lot, but the, that night that I did dress up a little bit more, I did use this. This is the Pacifica Cherry Velvet Matte Translucent Setting Powder that I bought recently that was in a video that I'll link down below. I, I'm actually really enjoying this so far. It really does mattify the skin without making it look flat. It is a white shade, but it definitely blends into the skin. It's very soft. It feels really good. And it's got a really nice lasting power on my normal skin. I'm not sure how it would affect oily skin, but for me, it works great. For brow products, I bought, brought two because I wasn't sure if this CoverGirl was running out. It's kind of old. I actually ended up just grabbing the Hourglass one. I don't think I use a CoverGirl one at all. And what I realized is that there's no difference in the quality of the Hourglass versus the CoverGirl. <laughs> 
That's what I realized when I was there. I was like, this is, this, this is, I don't know what would make it better, make it worth an hourglass price point to be 100% with you. But I mean, really, I don't think a, a price point like this is worth it. Like just buy the cover girl or whatever drugstore brow pencil you enjoy. I don't see any reason of buying a very expensive brow pencil, like a micro brow pencil like this, unless there's a specific shade that works for you and traditional shades you can find at the drugstore just don't work. That's that's my thoughts on that. For eyeliner, I brought two and they're both from M Cosmetics. M Cosmetics makes fantastic liquid eyeliners. I brought their brown and their black. They're both very, very, fine point very easy to use just quick swipes super easy brush tip application so it bends to the eye just really beautiful the brown is brown it's not so dark that it looks black but it's dark enough that it does it does look like it's significant on the lid so I used both of those and they're just wonderful liners they don't smear or smudge or anything weird very easy to apply highly recommend those M cosmetics eyeliners for mascara this is dying it's getting to that three month mark and I'm very sad about it this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills lash brag mascara Mascara. It is a fantastic mascara. I really, really love it a lot. It has one of those hourglass shaped brushes, which I personally really like. I find them to be very effective. It's got really nice length, really nice volume. Definitely doesn't bring me personally to false lash, but no mascaras really do. I, I very sparse, wimpy lashes. <laughs> so, but this, this is definitely one of those mascaras that brings my lashes to a new level uh, where I I feel like, you know, even though they're not false lash looking, they're significantly longer and more voluminous. It's a fantastic mascara. I don't have any problems with this flaking. I don't typically have problems with smudging, but no problems with flaking. And it's just wonderful. It's very heavy though. It's definitely got some weight to it. So I don't know if you like that or don't like that. I just figured I would mention it in case that matters to you. The only palette I have left in here is the highlighter palette. And if you've watched any of these videos before, I pretty much always bring this palette when I travel. This is the Tarte Skin Twinkle Volume 2 Lighting Palette. This is very old and I love this palette still. I pretty much don't use it that much when I'm home, but when I travel, this is my favorite. I mostly use this shade here, which is called Day. Light. It is just a perfect, perfect glowy highlight for me. Uh, this one is another one that I use a lot. This one's called Skylight. I might as well swatch them all for you while I'm at it. Might as well. Ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. <laughs> And they're just really glowy, beautiful highlights. I know that the really super poppy from space highlights are kind of going out of fashion. I'm sure they'll be back. Uh, but if you go in with a light hand, it doesn't end up being super insanely pigmented. But the Lasting Power is fantastic. It's very easy to apply. You only need the tiniest amount, uh, which is why I have so much left is because you only need the teeniest, tiniest little bit. For lips, I brought three colors. I brought two from Too Faced and one from Patrick Ta. I freaking love this lipstick. This is the one that I ended up using. This is in the shade She's Independent and it is his, I think it's a lip cream. Is that what this is called? I forget, but anyway, I'll link it down below. It's just so creamy and comfortable. It just feels really good. It's a pretty shade. I love it so much. I also grabbed these two from Too Faced. They smell really good and they're shades that I thought that I might use that I don't think I ended up using. I might've used a little bit of this gingerbread one mixed in with this on that date night night, the one where I dressed up a little more, uh, but I don't think I used this one. This one is the, uh, the pumpkin pie one. It doesn't have a name on yeah it does pumpkin spice this is pumpkin spice and this is gingerbread man i think they had a gingerbread woman didn't they am i remembering that correctly that there was a gingerbread woman one too didn't end up using these as much but really relied on this one a lot the last lipstick that i brought is from milani from their exhibitionist collection this is called tied up and this is just a really nice sheer throw on shade for when i was just needing something really quick it does blend out it's more of a tinted balm than anything just very comfortable, very easy to put on. Lasting Power is not fantastic, but it's really comfortable and it's just a beautiful shade. I did bring a lip balm as well. This is uh, the Essence Fruit Kiss Caring Balm and this is the raspberry flavor and it's got a little bit of a shine to it, but you know, it's fun for the beach. 
So I did use this a couple of times as well. And just very quickly for tools, I brought the beauty sponges from Shop Miss A. These are starting to get old, so I wanted to show them some love. They're so good. If you didn't see my Shop Miss A video, this was definitely the highlight is the sponges. And then for brushes, da -da -da -da, I have the Sigma Large Angled Contour. This is fantastic for blush and bronzer. For foundations, th this is just from Essence. This is the Makeup Buffer Brush. It works great. It's fantastic. This is a Laura Lee Los Angeles brush in L12. This I use for uh, under eye setting powder. When I wash it, sometimes I'll use it for highlighter, but for this trip, I was using it for setting powder. For brows, I just brought this really simple brush from e.l.f. and then a bunch of Sigma brushes for eyes. This is the E25, whoop! This is the E25 Max brush. This is the E45 Max and the E33 for detailing and the E49 Medium Tapered Blending. Any other Sigma ones in here? Yes, of course. <laughs> The uh, E27 Detail Blending. This is a fantastic brush as well. This is a brush from Moda. It's just a shader brush. And then this is a rougher brush. They were kind enough to send me a few brushes. This is the Zero Two, just really nice for detailing and packing color onto the lid. And then finally, this Lunar Beauty brush for uh, really detailed. Also, this is a great lip brush as well for like really getting into the Cupid's bow. This is the LBE4 brush. So yes. So quite the collection, but there was a lot of room in here. So I figured I'd just throw a bunch of stuff in there in case I needed it. And I probably used all of these brushes, honestly. I'm sure I did at one point or another use every single one of these brushes. I felt like I did pretty good packing. I like to have a varied number of blending brushes from smaller to larger. And I feel like that really helps my makeup to go on better to have that range of choices. And that's really helped my uh, my blending to be better. At this point, my friend, I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this away. <laughs> now that it's all unpacked, I have no reason to put it back in here and procrastinate putting it away. I'm gonna put it away now, but at this time, also, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and buy things that are totally worth it. I would love to know your thoughts on anything I showed you in this video, these products that you like, products that you would travel with. Would you have chosen something else? Are there things that I missed that would have been necessary for you? Things like setting spray that I do not use, do not like setting spray. It's a thing, it's a long story, but I don't use setting spray, so that might be something that you would have packed that I didn't pack. Uh, but really curious to hear your thoughts on my travel makeup bag. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. It helps me out so much. You may not even see anything different for you, but for me, it really does help out a lot. And if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to watch another one, YouTube should be recommending a couple for you right over here to watch. But if it is your time to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.